Hey YouTube, this is Licious Kid from Climax Combo, back with another Leaks of the Week. This week, we are finishing off Love Live and Angel Beats. Both of them are being, or I should say, both of them were released last Friday, but I will still be continuing off with the Leaks of the Week, even though the entire list is out. So yeah, just to tell you guys my opinion. Also, this week, uh, Project Diva 2 starts, I believe. That one's coming out July... I think July 25th, and both America and Japan is getting a simultaneous release for both of those, which I think is really cool for Bushiro to do. I think the simultaneous release idea is really cool. But yeah, uh, Project Diva 2 coming out as well, so some of the leaks have started for that, and yeah, hope you guys look forward to that. But anyways, I'll just get right to it. Um, oh yeah, before I, I forgot to mention, um, I do have boxes on the way already for the Love Live. I have six extra boosters on the way. However, for Angel Beats, I did not buy any boxes just because I don't really need it. I'm just going to single it. But I did order an Angel Beats TD. That Both of them will hopefully be coming in tomorrow. They are both in customs right now. But they've been in customs since Saturday, so they should be here tomorrow. Anyways, let's get right to it. So first off is this 3-2, level 3 for uh, Love Live. This is the second level 3 for Love Live. And yeah, it's the second level 3 for Love Live. Anyways, 3-2, 10k, common... Two soul. This being a common is just absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, uh, we'll go. Let's get started then. So first of all, it heals, which is already pretty amazing for a common. Second of all, it has a downside. However, when it's played from hand to stage, you can choose one of your music characters, or you must choose one of your music characters and put it to rest. Lastly, it combos off with the uh two with the two K one soul here. When you play the two K one, uh, okay. Well, I'll just read it. Oh, this ability can only be activated once per turn. When this card ba reverses its opponent in battle and the 2k1 is in play, you may pay to clock yourself one damage. If you do, place this card back to stand. And once again, the opening song is the 2k1. So essentially, Love Live now has a double attacker, which is just pretty crazy because Love Live already has pretty good finish in the form of the 3-2 Nico in green from the first booster, and then the 3-2 Kotori from the, sec from the second uh, booster. And so now we have another level 3 that is a game ender. Um, where do I start with this card? This card is just really good in general, because first of all, it heals, and it ends, and it's a game ender. Game enders that heal are generally really good just because of how easy and versatile they can be. So those two reasons, first off, is really good for this card. It also combos with the 2k1 soul. And generally, 2k1 soul is a pretty good climax, just because uh, when you play it, you draw a card. So the 2k1 soul uh, does not minus you in hand size, it breaks even. And the plus 2k does give you enough power where you can hopefully kill a character and also deal a little extra soul damage. And the 2k1 soul really combos well with the level 3, because of course, as you guys can see, the level 3 has to reverse something in order to re-stand. So the 2k helps the level 3 accomplish this. So my usual field setup is a level assist in the back of some form, usually the Eddie or the Hanayo, depending on what color I'm playing, and then the 1-0 global assist Umi. So usually she's 12k, 12k after assist, and when you play the 2k one, she'll be 14k. 14k is usually enough to kill any level 2, of course any level 1, and any level 0, because this does not have any level restriction or level minimum attached to it, so it can kill like a level 0, 1, 2, or 3. However, against a level 3, 14k is still in backup range most of the time. But however, this card can reach higher in power with the help of something like the 3-2 Kotori from the second extra booster. This has a flare trigger on play and it can pump one of your characters 1k on attack. And this itself is a game ender as well. A lot of decks already run this Kotori. So running this Kotori along with this healing game ender level 3 helps because you can pump this level 3 1k, helping it accomplish its uh, requirements that much easier. Yes, it does have a downside, but there's this downside because uh, the double, the cost for this level 3's double attack is pretty light because Shauna has a card just like this. However, there is no downside to it, but the Shauna level 3 requires you to pay 3 and clock yourself on damage. However, this one's only pay 2, clock yourself on damage, and because of that, she needs to have a downside, which is putting one of your characters from stand to rest. Now, this may hurt you. Because if you are using this level 3 as your only healer in your deck, and you don't want to use the 2k1, or you don't want to use a double attack and climax combo in the same turn, resting one of your back row characters can hurt, because Umi, you know, Umi is there. If you 
try to if you play this, then you will probably not be able to brainstorm, which may hurt you. But overall, that downside, it's it is a downside, but nonetheless, it is discarded. But the double attacking and the healing outweighs the cons. The pros outweigh the cons. So overall, I think this card is just really amazing, and it's a common, which is also amazing. And it combos with the 2k1, it game ends and it heals. This card is just really, really good. And I'm really excited to try this card out uh, tomorrow, hopefully. So yeah, overall, this card is just all kinds of good. Well, I'll be talking this card for 5 minutes. Anyways, let's go on. Next up is this 215k Iwasawa. She's, uh, a level, she's a common. She's a level assist in front. And she has another effect. Uh, place this card to rest. Choose one of your music characters. It gets plus 500 power until the end of the turn. Of course, this card is only good in music decks because the second effect only works in music decks. However, the 2-1 Kanade level assist that already exists works on all characters. So overall, this card is only really good in music decks just because of the 500 pump and its trait. Not the greatest level assist out there, to be honest, but um, it was nice of Bushiro to release a level assist for the music builds. And yeah, it's a common, so you can't complain. There's that. Next up is Monday's League. This one O oh, Maki. She is an R. Uh, she's 5k. For every other level 0 you control, she gains 500 power. So if you have a full field of level 0, she becomes 7k before assist, which is okay. Um, there's already cards with this exact same effect in Gargantia, Devil Survivor 2, Idol Masters. I think those are the only three sets, but I could be wrong. But uh, those cards are pretty good. But however, this card doesn't really work well in the set. Because those cards are pretty good, or the cards like these are pretty good if you run a level 0 assist. However, Love Live's usual assist is the 1 0 Umi at the least. And then if you only have, if your back row only has one level 0 and like a level 1 assist, she's only at 105.5k vanilla. So yeah, honestly, uh, these cards are okay, but just because Love Live is not really dependent on its level 0 assist or level 0s in general, um, this card just loses its lackluster in this set. So, and this card is just out. Uh, yeah, the one O Eddie from the first set out is just way better than this. So yeah, unfortunately Maki sucks, which is unfortunate because I like Maki. But what can we do? Next up, one one R Vanilla Genius. You know this being common, this being an R, amazing. Anyways, let's go on. Two one uh, two point five Kirin. She's also an R. She is a 2.5 backup, but of course her being only 2.5k for level 2 assist means she has another effect, which is right here. When you use this backup, reveal the top card of your deck. If that character is a music character, the choose one of your battling character gets plus 1k until the end of the turn. So essentially, uh, it's a 3.5 it's a backup, but of course it does have its uh, requirements. Of course, when, you're when, a, when you get attacked, you pay 1, you use the backup, you reveal top card. If it's not an event or in climax, your character will get pumped an extra 1k. This card is okay, to be honest. Probably, uh, to be honest, if I was running green, I probably would not be running this card. I would choose the 2-1 uh, Nozomi backup from the first set over this, just because the on-play 2k pump is pretty clutch because of 3-2 uh, Nico, who needs every power she can get to reverse an opponent's character, and also because of the new double-attacking Muse level 3 now. So, in general, I think that Nozomi is going to be that much more important in Love Live. So if you're running green, I would say run the Nozomi assist or backup. However, if you're running like red, yellow, blue, then you could try out one of the leans along with your one one smile up push up backups. But yeah, lean, not a bad card. I hope I pull one of these foil. Next up is this Yui. We've already talked about this a couple weeks back, and it's still the same as ever. Still a pretty solid card. Especially if you're running a music deck, then this card is a no-brainer to add to your decks just because of how easy it is to get out, and it gets pretty big power, and the flare trigger is pretty good. So overall, Yui is a solid card if you're running the music builds. Will she be being played in the non-music builds just for her flare trigger? And the fact that she can still come out pretty easily? Who knows? We'll have to see. Maybe not? Maybe we will? I don't know. We'll see. Next up is this Eosa, which is not so good, however, 217k common, uh, death music for every music control character you control, she gets plus 100 power, so if you have full field of music characters, she hits 9k before assist, 
And lastly, her last effect, she cannot be targeted by opponent's card effects, which is like whatever. She can't get bounced. Um, yeah, can't get bounced. Um, not that great of a card, honestly. If you're playing up against Angel Beats, the prime bounce target is the 1 0 Kanade Global Assist. And they'll probably be bouncing that before this, so yeah, honestly, this card's not that great, but it's a common. What can you do? Not asking for much. And I really like the art on these, pretty cute. Anyways, let's go on. Tuesday's Leaks. This is a pretty interesting card right here. It's a 0 0 Kotori, uh, 1500 power. She's an R. So when she's played from hand to stage, choose one of your characters, it gets plus 1k until the end of the turn. She can also pump herself. And her second effect uh, is pretty good. She is a runner. Um, if you don't know what a runner is, a runner is a card that... Uh, so what a runner does is that during the, opponent's of your, the be during the beginning of your opponent's attack phase, you can move them to an open slot on your field. And these are generally level 0 cards. Why runners are really good is because runners allow you to keep your keep your level zero, and yeah, it allows you to keep your level zero essentially, and you take a direct hit in. And taking a direct hit at level zero is more than welcome, so you can reach level one faster than your opponent. And you keeping your character allows you to build more stock and build up more hand size. So overall, if, you're, if a set has a level zero runner, um, it's pretty good. And runners are always welcomed in every set, to be honest. However, love live runners is a little questionable. Because during the start of your opponent's attack phase, you may place the top card of your deck to the waiting room. If that card is level 0 or lower, you can move this to an empty border on your front stage. So yes, this one's requirements are a bit harder than a lot of other other runners, like Sinful Gears, um, Shining Force. I don't know if that one even has a requirement, but Shining Force has one, Railgun has one, uh, Shin-Chan has one. Those are pretty easy requirements. However, this one is a little bit more difficult, and she is pretty weak in power. But still, I still think this card is pretty good, just because um, you play the runner, if her effect goes off once, then she already pays for herself. If it goes off twice, then, you know, Kotori has done a fantastic job already. But even though this does miss, let's say you mill the top card, it's not a level 0, you still mill one card. Hopefully it wasn't. If you hit a climax, that's good. That way you can take more damage at level 0. If you don't, then, you know, you, go th you thin out your deck faster. And late game, this does act as a 1k pump, which once again helps with the 3-2 Nico from the first set, and which also helps with the 3-2 uh, double attacking Muse now in the new set. So overall, this Kotori I think is pretty good, just because of the ability to run, and ability to act as a 1k pump during the end game. A lot of people, I see a lot of people not like this card, just because it's weak, and it's, you know, it's pretty hard. It's running, it's requirements to run is pretty bad compared to a lot of other runners but still i think kotori is an interesting card and i'm willing to try out two in my new build so there's kotori for you next up is this one one umi 6k r um if you have three or more music characters she gets plus 1k so she hits vanilla power of 7k but she does have clock encore on top of that one one seven k's with a hand encore or clock encore is um nothing special a lot of sets already have cards like this However, they are not they are not bad. They're already they're pretty good. A welcome addition to any set to be honest. And one one and this Umi is no exception. I really like how the encore is not tied with uh having three or more music characters like the Honoka is from the first set. Because I find that to be pretty annoying. But because these two are these two are separate, I really like this Umi. So uh, I think I'll be trying out two of these Umis. In my new builds, we'll have to see. But overall, Umi is a solid card. Next up, we have this 2-1 Kanade in this very... Um, how do I describe it? Lewd pose. Anyways, um, she's death and student counsel, so as per usual, she is a common. When she's played from hand to stage, she gets X power until the end of the turn, where X is the number of student counsel control characters you control, multiplied by 500. So when you play her, if you have a full field of student counsels, she hits 10k before assist. But then after that, she'll always be a wimpy 8k. Honestly, not that good of a card, just because it's tied to the student council requirement, and it only lasts on play. Overall, this card is pretty bad. But the art is pretty sexy. So, yeah. I don't know if there's a foil art for this. Maybe there is. Maybe it gets even better. I don't know. But yeah, overall, this card sucks. 1-0 Otonashi. He is 5k. He is death, student council, spoiler alert. But, uh... 
Yeah, 105k. He has Clock Encore. That is his only effect. Um, 105ks with Clock Encores are pretty good just because they're costless. Clock Encore. It pretty much guarantees that you're going to be building up a shitload of stock. Yes, your character does die, but you still keep your character. It was costless, etc., etc. Overall, these cards are pretty solid, and I'm pretty happy about this. And it only being a common, I'll probably be picking up four. Next up is the first Project Diva leak, and it is Miku 104K. This is the Triple R version. I don't know what her original rarity is. I think I forgot to check, or did they even show it? I don't even know. They probably showed it, but I completely forgot. If you guys do know the original rarity, let me know. I don't think it was a double R though. And if it was, it'd be pretty bad if it was a double R. Anyways, let's go on. Uh, 104k, triple R version. Uh, music as per usual. So this she gets 500 power per music character you control. As you guys know, every character in D.Va is music. So for every character you control, she gets plus 500 power. So before 6, she'll be 106k. And she also combos with this plus two soul trigger right here. Oh, this is a non-hollow art. Oh, that's interesting. I thought they would show the hollow art with the hollow. Oh, whatever. Um, pretty much when you attack with the plus two soul, you can pay one. If you do, all your music characters get plus two five power until the end of the turn. Um, and of course, once again, plus two soul. Honestly, this card is whatever. Just because the combo in itself. It's okay, but just because it's tied with the 2k or with the plus 2 soul climax, it's not that good because, you know, plus 2 soul can be a little inconsistent at times because, you know, it might lead your opponent to canceling more and the double soul trigger can end up making you lose a couple games. And she's only 106k before the assist, which is okay, I guess. Not that great, to be honest. This card is just not that good. And honestly, the 1-0 Time Machine Miku Climax combo is like 10 times better than this card. So I don't really see this card getting much play. I think this triple R art is really cute, though. So yeah, unfortunately, not that good, though. And I like the song, Decorator. I like this song a lot. But unfortunately, not that good of a card. Next up, we have Thursday's Leak. This is the zero. First off, the zero zero Nico. This Nico is pretty bad in competitive builds, but if you're into Nico and you're into waifu builds, then this card totally fits up your alley because this is a 500 global assist to all Nikos, to only Nikos I should say, 500 global to Nikos. She has another effect, um, pay 2, rest 2 of your characters, then choose one of your characters with Nico in its name, it gets plus 2k power and then the following effect until the end of the turn. When this card reverses its opponent in battle, you may choose one character from your waiting room and add it to your hand. Pretty good card for Nico Dex, but besides that, this card is pretty trash, so we'll move along. Next up, this is one O Nozomi 6K. She's music. She's an R. This is also an R. I forgot to mention both of them are R's. But yeah, one O 6K R. Um, when she's played from hand to stage, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is not a music character, place this card to rest. Of course, she she only has a demerit because she's an oversized one O. And yeah, this is her demerit, her going to rest if if you're, you reveal the top card and it's not a music. Uh, it's not that great to be honest. It's honestly out, it's outclassed by the 10 Eddie by far, so I wouldn't even consider running this card. But if you were to choose a 106 k I would probably choose the No Brand Girl Hanayo from the second extra, from the second booster, because at least you still get to attack with the Hanayo. However, with this card, you cannot attack. So overall, I think this Nozomi is pretty bad. Next up, we have this 2 2 Eddie 8k. She is an R and she has 2 soul trigger. And she smacks for 2 soul. For every other music control you character you control, this gets plus 500 power. So if you have a full field before it's this, she'll be 2 2 10k. Um, honestly, not that good. I'd rather be using the 1 0 Umi or the 2 1 Umi from the first set because it only costs 1 stock. And you know, you can always make her 10k if you play properly by resting your back row for the brainstorm, etc. etc. And honestly, if I wanted to pay two stock for my level two game, I would be running Maki. I would be running blue and I would be running the 3 2 Maki over this card. So overall, this Eddie is pretty bad. Next up, we have this UD Bay. It's been re leaked. We've already known what this card does. I've talked about it in the past. However, we now know what she combos with. Um, because we now know where to we com what she combos with, I can prop give a proper evaluation. So, uh, you know, what? I'll just go over the I'll just go over UDP again. Damn, I've been talking for a long time. Anyways, uh, 
I'll go over this UDP again. Three two nine five double R two soul. Um, death weapon. On play, draw two, discard a card. Combos with the gate. When you play the when she attacks with the gate, she gets plus fifteen hundred power, and she deals one damage to your opponent. Of course, this damage can't be cancelled. Once again, combos with the gate. The gate is a climax rare. So yeah, let's go over this card. First of all, I'm really surprised that this is a gate, just because Angel Beast already has two gates. It has uh. Oh, I thought I saved them. It already has Afterlife Battlefront and it already has After the Battle, but now they have the core of the world, so they have three gates. Pretty irrelevant, but just just because they had two gates, I'm really surprised they gave them a third gate. But um, first of all, it comboing with the gate is kind of a good and a bad thing because, of course. There's a lot of anti-meta running around in the J in Japan right now. There's Kontai, and yeah, just just Kontai. Like Kontai is running amok. Little Busters now has anti-salvage. A lot of new anti-salvage cards are being printed, and for that reason, Gate is losing popularity in Japan. And of course, this being a Gate does not help at all. And Angel Beast is already pretty susceptible to anti-salvage, and this you know being a Gate doesn't help Angel Beast all that much. But you know, in everything else, in every other matchup, Gate is pretty good. And of course, Gate really helps out Angel Beats because Angel Beats is pretty dependent on its hand size, so you can just constantly encore. Yeah, you do have the 1 0 Otonashi bond combo with the 1 1 ten, uh, Tenshi, but still, that you know that only does so much for you. So, it being a Gate does really help. And it's pretty nice because the Afterlife Battlefront Gate is pretty bad. The, comp this card, the card that this combos with is pretty bad. I don't even remember what it does, but I just know it's pretty bad. So now that they actually have two useful gate combos, it's pretty good. Yeah, but you know, that being said, a lot of Angel Beast decks are straying away from the eight gate builds. A lot of them are running, you know, four gates, four plus two souls, four gates, you know, couple wind triggers, etc., etc. Just in general, a lot of Angel Beast decks are not running eight gates anymore. They're running four gates and four of something else, just because you know it helps the deck out a lot in certain matchups. And makes it more consistent. So, will people be going back to eight gates, four of these, and four of the old kind of UDP combo? Both of them are level three climax combo, so it can get a little awkward at times. However, I do think this card is still pretty good. I think I would be running like four of these climax combos, and maybe like two wind triggers, two plus. I don't know. I honestly don't know where I'm going to go with the deck at this point, but um, in general, this card is pretty solid just because of its ability to burn one. Because a lot of Angel Beast decks are kind of going towards Soul Rush builds, so perhaps Angel Beast will stray away from its you know healing constantly build into more of a game-ending build with this new 3-2 UDP along with the 3-2 UDP from the first set. So in general, this card is a really welcome addition to Angel Beast, and I think this is by far the best card Angel Beast got in re-edit. And I've talked about this card more than long enough. Overall, this card is really good. It's at $35 a piece right now, so, you know, that's saying something. However, it is week, it is week one price hype, though. So hopefully it goes down, because it's going to kill my wallet if I try to get a place out of these. Anyways, let's go on. 1-0 Miku, 5k, uncommon. She combos with the book, which is Romeo and Cinderella. Uh, when she this card attacks with Romeo and Cinderella, and you may, then you may pay costs. Then you can pay one. If you do, choose one of your characters. Both this and that character gets 1500 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. So you target this, this will be a 6 5 base. You target something else, you know, that will also get plus 1500 power until the end of the turn, which is pretty cool, I guess. Honestly, as of right now, blue in D.Va is really, really bad. And this card is not worth running blue for. And honestly, if you're gonna want to run a level one climax combo, Time Machine Miku is better by far. Much like you know what I said for Decorator, one O Time Machine Miku is really good, and you should be running that over this. Diva is gonna need something pretty amazing if they are going to replace that. But overall, this card's not that good. And lastly, the final leak. Angel Beast didn't get anything new. However, we did see what this new, what this Honoka comboed with. So first off, this one O Honoka. She is an R. She combos with the stock one soul. And yeah. 
she is uh, did I say she's an R? Well, she's an R. Anyways, um, when she this card attacks, and you have to stock one soul climax on your climax border, you can pay one, clock yourself one damage. If you do, this card gets plus 7k until the end of the turn, and your opponent cannot encore. This includes hand encore, clock encore, and pay three encore. So, in general, I think this card is pretty bad. This card has been leaked for like a, le a week now, however we didn't know what it comboed with. And I was really, 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 really hoping it comboed with the 2k1, because, you know, Honoka is the center of this song, and she's wearing the uniform, and, you know, I want good Honoka cards. I was really hoping it was a 2k1. If it was a 2k1, I was considering running one of this just for certain matchups, like if I'm playing Vivid Red or um, uh, Rewrite with their high power level 2s on level 1. You can just play the 1 o Honoka, you know, if it was the 2k1, pump it, she gets plus 7k, she'll kill it, they can't even encore it, good game. However, because it combos with the stock 1 soul, this card is completely, it's, it's, com it's bad, it's just worthless, it's not... Its value is completely gone. It's because you play the climax, you're dropping one hand size, you pay one, and then you clock yourself one damage. Just, you know, so your opponent can encore and she'll be really high power. The climax lineup is just too tight as it is. You're going to probably be running four to five gates. I'd say five gates and three 2k1 souls. I think that will be the new climax lineup for Angel Beats build. Or not Angel Beats, for Love Live decks. And so this card has no place in Love Live. And unfortunately, this Honoka sucks. Now. So yeah, that is the final card that has been shown this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said already, I have already ordered six extra booster boxes for Love Live. They should be in tomorrow, and I'll open them tomorrow late at night. And then Tuesday, hopefully they will be up for you guys to enjoy. But yeah, that is the leaks for this week. Overall, my opinion, Love Live, the second extra booster, or I should say the extra booster is... Okay, it was only it's only 27th card, so and Love Live is already pretty good as it is, so I didn't really expect them to get you know the cards that are that good. But this double attacking Muse is honestly pretty insane, and yeah, I think this this level three by itself makes the second booster, you know, really awesome. And I want to try out pretty much my top three cards for the second extra for the extra booster: Kotori, Umi, and the double attacking Muse. Angel Beats, to be honest, I don't think Re-Edit did. Re-Edit doesn't help Angel Beats all that much. I think the best card in Re-Edit is probably the Yuri Bay, by far. And maybe we'll see Music have a comeback with Yui. I don't know, hopefully adds a little flavor to Angel Beats. But overall, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, both sets got a pretty decent boost. So yeah, that is all I'm going to say. And I hope you guys enjoy this video, and until next time, guys. Whoops. Uh...